David, I'll start with you. The fact that major averages, and I realize it's a holiday today and a shortened trading day and volumes are probably pretty low, but the fact that we're talking about all of this drama right now in, in D.C. where stimulus and everything else is concerned and the markets are higher, what does that tell us? Uh, it's sort of a continuation of a lesson that's been going on for many months, which is that the markets haven't cared about any of this drama, uh, particularly on the stimulus side. We went about five months not believing we were going to get a deal, in fact, not getting one. The markets went up 4,000 points during that time. So this last minute back and forth has not been particularly dramatic for markets either. Uh, ultimately, what markets need to know, they do know, which is that some form of a deal is going to get done at some point. Uh, I think it's more of a political story than a market one. And, and that's what we're seeing playing out not only today, but even earlier in the week when the deal was passing. The markets didn't respond particularly favorably then either. We, we got just a handful of trading days left in 2020. Looking ahead into 2021, you like emerging markets right now. Why? And are there particular markets that you're focused in on or just emerging markets in general? No, it's very particular. And, and as a matter of fact, we don't even view the emerging markets as a top down, like, oh, we like this country or that country. It's very bottom up around where there is organic earnings growth taking place that now, for the first time in a number of years, doesn't have the headwind of a really strong U.S. dollar holding back emerging markets returns for us U.S. equity investors. So I do like going into the new year, the emerging market story. It's frankly been an incredible story this year that I'm shocked is not getting more play because it was beaten up and it's been ignored for several years. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden, it not only worked as an investment thesis this year, it worked dramatically. But all of those stories are still there, and you don't have to pay 30 times earnings for it. You still get to pay a mid-teens or multiple for a lot of really strong domestic growth. I mean, domestic in those local markets, certain areas in South America, Asia, and so forth. So we're really big on the EM story. All right. So to wrap all of this up, we've just talked about the dollar. We just talked about emerging markets. David, give me some stocks for the stocking, if you will. We um, are dividend growth investors at the Bonson Group. And I really believe there's some phenomenal dividend payers, dividend growers with strong balance sheets to give you a defensive play, but also have tremendous upside from here. So we like Apollo. We also like Blackstone in the same group. But these private equity uh, asset managers that are fee-based, they're not balance sheet sensitive businesses, uh, kick off a ton of free cash flow, and a, particularly in Apollo's case, are just really undervalued. So we like Apollo a lot, and I know a prior guest, you are talking about the energy sector. I cannot find a reason to not like Chevron. A 6% plus yield, that 6% is protected. They have the balance sheet to get through it. And every negative comment someone may have about the awful things the Biden administration might do to the energy sector, which actually is my view, it actually helps Chevron. As some of the smaller players end up getting hurt by policy, and it accrues up to Chevron, who can kind of afford the uh, extra regulation. So we like Chevron and we like Apollo going into the new year. All right. Of course, energy, interestingly, is up 25 percent quarter to date. It's the best performing sector in the S&P, although still very beaten down for the year. Guys, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Thanks Me for joining too. us today, Allie and David. Thank you. Be well.